What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at how to paint textured red fabric. For our base colour we'll start by mixing a saturated red with a, a nice dark green. I'm using Scale Colour Antares Red and Boreal Green, but you can check the description box for some pretty good equivalents. For our first highlight we'll add some red in there and just mix in a touch of water to thin it down to a layer consistency. So I'm just going to block that in wherever the light would be strongest. So along his back near the top, his shoulders and any little folds along the sides or on the arms. You can see that we've started very dark but we'll build this up to quite a strong red over the next few steps. That darkness in the base colour is going to give us a really strong contrast at the end. We'll add some water to that highlight colour now, thinning it down to a glaze consistency and we'll just use that to glaze over the transition between the base and highlight. You can see that I'm moving the brush from the base colour towards the highlight. This is really going to help blur out that edge. Mix in a bit more red and some water, thinning it down to a heavy glaze consistency. So just a little thinner than a layer and we'll use that to build up both the colour and the texture. So what I'm doing here is just stippling over the parts of the coat where I want to build up the highlights. I'm being quite heavy handed at this stage and I'm not too fussed about neatness here. All I'm really doing is bouncing the brush over the surface, essentially dabbing on little blobs of colour. Even though I'm not being very precise here, because I have the paint pretty thin, I still have quite a lot of control over the colour. If I want the colour to be stronger, I can simply apply more dots and splodges at that point. Here on the folds, we don't really need to build up texture just yet. The surface area here is pretty small, so any texture we add at this stage is going to be lost later on. So we'll just paint these on normally as a bit of a time saver. On the shoulder you can see that I'm applying more dots right in the middle at the highest point and then I'm making them more sparse as I move away from the highlight. So I'll go ahead and add a bit more red and we'll keep building up the colour. We're still using the same technique here, stippling on the colour, just trying to intensify the red towards the middle of the back and the tops of the shoulders. Again, don't worry too much about adding texture to the folds, we'll get to that later on. So we'll use pure red now and we're just going to keep stippling that colour on. So it's a pretty simple process really, we just keep adding more red as we build up the colour with lots of little dots. When you're doing this try not to consciously think about each individual dot, instead just let your hand shake a little bit and guide the tip of the brush around as the tip bounces around on the surface. We can start to add some texture now on the folds, so we're just putting in a little row of dots along the top. Near the bottom here we are going to switch to a darker red, more closer to our first highlight colour and we'll add some texture so that it's not so smooth. So we're just uh, again just applying little dots here and there until it looks quite nice. And we'll highlight the lower part of this little tail at the side here, just building it up to red over a couple of layers. <music> 
Alright, so now that we've built up the red, we can add some extra highlights. To do that, we're going to mix in some Games Workshop Moot Green into the red, and that's going to give us a really nice warm tone. And again, we're going to stipple this on with little dots. And I'm trying to be a lot more precise now. Using the green in highlight gives you a really interesting colour. It might look wrong on the palette, but once you put it on the model, you're going to see that it gives you a pretty good effect. We're focusing on basically all the same areas as we did before, giving a bit more attention to the back of the coat near the neckline and the tops of the shoulders. Add some more moot green. Now the colour is actually going to seem darker than your last highlight while it's on the palette, but again, when you apply it to the model, you'll see that it actually works really well. Okay, so to push this further, we'll mix in a bit of Vallejo Ivory, and don't forget to thin it down a little bit with some more water. We need to be quite careful here, as this colour is pretty bright in comparison to the last couple of steps, so be sure it's thin enough that you have quite a lot of control over the opacity. Alright, so we're just going to add one last highlight now by adding some more ivory in there and I'm being even more careful this time, trying to keep these dots small and giving a bit more thought into where I'm placing them. You can see that this gives quite a nice natural effect. It's not really that difficult, it's just a bit labour intensive, but if you're doing say a character model or something for display, it's definitely worth the extra effort. Alright guys, so I hope that was helpful. I'm quite looking forward to getting the new camera. I've got some cool plans for the coming year. I'm hoping to do a run on Golden Demon, so I'll be stepping the painting up a couple of gears, and obviously I'll be filming that as well. So hopefully I can win something, or at least get to the finals. I guess we'll just have to see. Alright guys, so I hope Santa's good to you this year. Thanks again for all your support. I really couldn't do it without you. Take it easy. Bye for now.